Hi Sol, welcome. It's International Women's Day. It's Fair Trade Fortnight. Uh, we are friends. We've been, we've known each other for a while. It's lovely to be in the company of you, Minister for Social Justice, and Jennifer Sambazi from Mount Elgon Agroforestry Community Cooperative uh, Enterprise Limited. So it's Fair Trade Fortnight at the moment. We can't talk about fair trade without talking about food and obviously climate change. Um, but it's Day of the Women, it's all about us, what we're doing. How, do you, how does fair trade empower women, Jennifer? Thank you, Ellen. Uh, first, uh, let me introduce myself, then we can go further in the discussions. Um, Jennifer Sambazi, fair trade co farmer from Uganda on the slopes of Mount Engon. I do fair trade and organic 100%, and I'm happy to we get involved in that job because it gives me courage to look after my family and other farmers' families to make sure they are well, they, at least they have a good life the world. And how is fair trade pivotal to that work that you do? Uh, fair trade is uh, doing much work because at first it empowered me as a, a leader as a woman farmer, it empowered me to be empowering other women and I have learned a lot, that's why I keep on also empowering other women to come on board and act as I'm acting and it's really very nice. We are getting good prices for our coffee, there is market for the coffee because if you have a product and you like we have seen it, it's not good. So we are happy we have, we have already market and we are doing well. And fair trade is also helping farmers in the communities. There are premiums which we get after selling our coffee, which develops our communities. If we are going to get those in, premiums we have to call AGM, we sit together, farmers make resolutions and see how we can use the premiums. It's lovely to hear you talk about that magic premium that yes. not a lot of people know about. Now it's quite clear how much she empowers us, just, isn't it Minister? Um, tell us a little bit about that and how you support fair trade personally. Well, it's absolutely wonderful. We, every time Jennifer you speak about you know why you've come into why you've come into being a leader in the co coffee farming, and then through fair trade empowering others, other leaders, women leaders particularly, and looking after your family and the community is just so powerful. So, I mean, I've always been committed to fair fair trade, um, but I I need to make it part of my life, you know, daily life. Um, so wherever possible, I will be buying fair trade goods, <laughs> especially Jennifer's coffee. Um, but also, as a politician, I would encourage all my um, the towns in my community to become fair trade. Uh, but as a minister, I will make sure I want to make sure that fair trade is right at the top of our agenda, our economic agenda. It's not a side issue. It's got to be right. If you are a government which believes in social justice, you need economic justice as well. So it's every aspect of the government I would want to influence. And indeed, that's that's what we do. So all of my colleagues in the Welsh government, First Minister Mark Drakeford, I've mentioned today the fact we have a woman finance minister. We have a woman, actually a minister, Julie James, in char charge of tackling climate change. I'm the Minister for Social Justice. It is a very much a woman-led government to commit ourselves to supporting fair trade. And that has to be personal and political. Some powerful stuff there, Minister. It's an exciting time to be in Wales, I think, when you touch on the fact that we have a portfolio of climate change. Jennifer, how is climate change impacting you and the women farmers who work so hard to bring us our food every day? Yeah, actually, as farmers, especially women, we are facing challenges. We are on the forefront of the challenges because being a woman is very hard and you have to work hard so that you sustain the family. But if you are working hard and on the other hand, climate change is impacting you, it's not good. Uh, climate change has caused many, many challenges. Uh, because we experience unpredicted weather. Sometimes you might be 
hoping to receive rain in time, but we have a long drought, which affects our crops, maybe and coffee, being the cash crop, and some other fruits like bananas and maize, beans. And during that course, we are experiencing pests which are attacking our crops, mainly coffee, like me, Jennifer, the other year, I produced 400 kilograms of dry parchment. But this previous year, it was only 300 kilograms. I lost 25% because of pests, because of overflooding. So if a pest attacks a tree, you must make sure you will be, you be, you be stamp that tree so that it comes out again mm -hmm. as a new crop. And not only again for some other families are missing their, their live dear ones because of mud slide. Some are missing the fertility of the soil. Like that, we are at a threat. Mm -hmm. It's heartbreaking, isn't it? it? It is. And I mean, this is why it was so important that Jennifer, you and other women, I say, came to the COP26 and you spoke about the impact of climate change. We supported you coming and speaking up because we also want to do everything we can to make Jennifer's Coffee a success, to get it in all the shops and all the cafes and, and restaurants. But you are challenged, as you said, by climate change. And we need to learn from that. Um, we need to learn and we need to, to support you, the flooding, the devastation to, to families. So my colleague Julie James, Minister for Climate Change, very aware of this as we tackle our own the impact of climate, our responsibilities for tackling climate change. It's for you that we need to, to look to, to not just understand and, and say, oh, you know, what, you know, this sounds, this is terrible, we've seen the devastation, but what is it that we can do to help you uh, through, through this challenge? I mean, 7% of uh, global carbon emissions is uh, based in Africa, and yet they are right on that front line. They're receiving um, much more uh, unfairness in the impact of climate change. Uh, you introduced me to Topi, one of the farmers who are being identified as one of the most vulnerable on the mountain. And because of that work that the cooperative had done, you and your portfolio were able to fund a programme of decarbonisation and we have some solar lights to those farmers, don't we, Jennifer? Yes, so mostly in our community, uh, we are still sticking to using kerosene because of uh, we have no electricity yet. Yeah. Government has given us electricity, but farmers can't manage paying for that electricity, so they were connecting illegal. Then government said, no, it cut it off. Then we kept on using candles, as Ellen is saying, mainly we use candles in our homes and kerosene is a threat to our, our human lives mm -hmm. and human health, I mean. And we had to sit and discuss how to overcome this challenge of kerosene. Then we had to make an assessment of how we can decarbonize this kerosene and we came up with an idea of getting at least delayed solars to make sure the, the first vulnerable families along Mount Elgon can use. And we identified, identified 500 of them to be using those delayed solars. And I'm happy Erin bought the idea and got to, to the Welsh government and to reward for us. And it, it disproportionately impacts women. So the use of her thing. So, yes. you know, if your okay. work is a health benefit, it's an economic yes. benefit. They have 10 to 20% more impact um, economically now because of the support that, that we do through the world in Africa. And of course, the tree planting scheme. Well, yes. And I mean, it was so good yesterday when you came into our Welsh Parliament to meet all the politicians. Um, all the different political parties, everybody wanting to learn that you could show us those solar lights that we have funded. Um, I will be asked questions in, as a Minister for Social Justice, you know, um, with scarce public funny, funding money that you have, what are your priorities? And I know as far as we, we have a lot of concerns about poverty and tackling um, inequalities, in our own country, but we have to look to what we can do. What impact can we make? 
Um, and what investment can we have in Africa because of that shocking, you know, seven percent? I mean, we are responsible for climate change. We in the West, and we've got to back you. And to have such an example, which, as you say, um, improves health and well-being, um, to dangers, averts danger, uh, but also in your in your lives, in your family's lives, but also something which will be productive, which will actually help with the coffee growing. Um, we must pu publicise this. We need to get the message over, don't we? Mm, absolutely. And that's the purpose of Jennifer's Coffee, isn't it? Women uh, Farmers Front and Centre um, established a social enterprise here in Wales with global outcomes um, yes. and a, a market for your farmers. What message do you have for women in business or fair trade farmers around the world that look to you, Jennifer, to think? What, what message do you have? Uh, the message I have for uh, fair trade farmers all over the world is that let's do it together, do fair trade farming, and buy fair trade products to help the farmers live in the gardens. And your message, Minister? Yes, fair trade is is so important it has to come at the forefront of our priorities um, working with you and learning from you and you know this is where let's all be drinking our, our Jennifer's coffee but also all of the other fair trade products which of course of course will make a difference to you you know the, li the living your lives but also your children families and economies well, happy International Women's Day, happy Fair Trade Fortnight. Dear Khamal Yan,